Hi Virgo Libra, welcome into your timeless astrology tarot reading here at Cusp of Roses. My name is Gabrielle for any of those new tuning in for those returning welcome back y'all i'm excited to get into this energy all right um we had a lot of fun over on the channeling and meditation session for this reading that is available to youtube members only and this first round that i've done war is open to all member tiers on the youtube side of the channel okay this is an exclusive series for youtube members if you're interested in joining click that join button next to subscribe if you're watching on a desktop or you see it on your phone underneath the video or you can go into the description box and join the membership channel there we will have an extended to this reading. It will be over on Patreon. That link is also down below. And if you are new to astrology, you do not know your natal chart, because I'm going to talk a lot about placements and aspects and all of that type of thing. Make sure you use the resources in the description box below that are absolutely free for you and not affiliates for me, but just um, support for you to learn a little bit more about yourself. Start with your Western and then elevate or graduate, I should say, into your Vedic, okay? One is more follows the sun, the other follows the moon, basically. Okay, that's why it's important to kind of know both, but start with your sun energy. Let's just get right into it. I'm going to sound the singing bowl. This is a moment where we take to just kind of ground for you guys to get in tune with your intuition, your higher self, so that you can absorb the messages that are truly meant for you in this moment and leave what does not. Just because it doesn't resonate now doesn't mean it won't resonate down the road. I do tend to pull energy ahead of time <laughs> more often than not. Um, yeah so keep that in mind these are all timeless and if it pops up again for you guys there could be a message that we talk about here that's really relevant and helpful and useful to you down the line so i'm going to sound the singing bowl one to three times i'm then going to get your incense lit we got a lot of energy in the heart chakra so that is what we are going to burn here for you virgo libra okay So go ahead and get started on what feels right and comfortable for you. Hey, Solar Moon. Hey, CC. Good to see you. Alrighty. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Holy Spirit, my ascended ancestors and all holy angels, thank you so much for being here with me. And with the Virgo Libra Cusp Collective of Energy here on YouTube, those with strong influences in their sixth and seventh house or strong Virgo and Libra or multiple, I guess we could say, right? Um, Virgo and Libra placements in their natal chart. Or for anyone else who just feels called to watch, thank you for protecting our energy, guiding us, leading Virgo Libras in the way that they need to. And I ask that all the messages that come forward in this reading, bring them closer to you. We love you and so it is. All right. Hey, Queen. Yeah, there you go. Yin and water. My YouTube members, you already know the deal, okay? Um, we were getting a lot of messages around um, self-love and relearning to love your own beauty. Calling back the fragmented parts of yourself from other situations, people, connections, Gemini in reverse. And it's so interesting. Spirit was talking to me all day today because for some reason... I think, um, was it in the last reading that we did where the energy around you, the Aries was in reverse? Something about that really stuck out to me because we're in Aries season for it. So for it to be reversed, I'm like, that's just very strange. But Spirit was saying, think about the opposite of Aries would be Libra. 
And then that read, I believe, was a very like heavy south node. Was that Aquarius Pisces? Kind of heavy south node Saturn. So it kind of made sense. So Gemini being in reverse Sagittarius. Okay, someone could be in Knight of Cups energy. You might be the Knight of Cups here. Take it how it resonates. Yeah, you got the fifth house, Leo. Yeah, fire. There you go. Passion, play, children, confidence, and creativity. What else is surrounding Virgo Libras right now? Cancer energy, the moon. So yeah, we definitely picked up on a strong feminine vibe, a strong um, sense of feminine energy and or the woes. <laughs> the woes of being a woman in a way. Nature, oh, nature, but it says nurture. So your nature, right? What comes naturally. Maybe someone feels like they're not naturally curious or networking or socializing doesn't. Someone could be socially awkward. Fourth house, maybe someone who's like a bit sheltered as well with cancer in the fourth house. Cancer naturally ruling the fourth house and the moon. Oh, triple cancer. So you're dealing with a cancer energy. Nurture, comfort, protection, cultural, family, roots, home, peace, comfort, satisfying emotional needs, nurturing again, nurture yourself and others. So maybe something about the home, maybe someone's a home body. It's like an introvert meeting an extrovert here. You know how they always say like an extrovert always claims an introvert like you're mine. <laughs> you're my introvert. Because that is a very strange phenomenon. Extroverts always love trying to pull introverts out of their shell. And it's like, what if they actually like their shell? Like, why are you... Don't force a fish to fly. You know what I mean? Like, let them be them. But anyway, I don't know. Maybe that's what you feel. Maybe, maybe you feel misunderstood in some sort of way. Gemini in reverse. Maybe a little awkward. Maybe there's some neurodivergency here, Virgo Libra. Or there's a neurodivergency in someone connected to you. Or maybe you have neurodivergent children. Or a family member that needs care in that way. Pisces and Cardinal. Okay, Intimacy, intuition, compassion, instigation, bravery, and a pioneering spirit. Water, fire. Yeah, setting fire to the water. Burning up the emotions. Burning up the feelings. Burning up the memories I'm getting with Pisces nostalgia pisces is the thank you spirit pisces <laughs> pisces is the knight of cups pisces aries energy there you go interestingly enough aries being in reverse stuck to the brain during aquarius pisces reading do you see how all this connects okay definitely because of the moon some of you are getting a fresh start in a home situation post this new moon solar eclipse Aquarius. Ooh, some of you could have an Aquarian moon. Originality, philanthropy, progressive imaginings. Some of you feel like it's time to move beyond your cultural upbringing or it's time to kind of leave something behind due to some sort of opposition. Or you just don't relate anymore, right? Gemini's social butterfly. And again, yes, that's a stereotype, but it's an easy way to identify that natural ability to just network and meet people and talk to people because of the well of knowledge that most Geminis are. They like eat information. You know what I mean? They just love to know, love to investigate, love to research. And it's interesting now that I've got that directive from spirit of when these oracles are in reverse, especially if it's a zodiac sign, look across the wheel so seventh house partner, opposition, right, period, literally, come on now, imbalance, a point of tension, a power struggle, and, huh, could be dealing with a Gemini or a Sagittarius here, Virgo Libras, where, like, that energy, if that's a particular person, there, it's, like, too much, a handful and with Cancer, the fourth house and the moon and Pisces, it's like, I want to be home. <laughs> you know, like someone is just very comfortable in their shell, in their skin, in their beauty or, oh, like a hermit. You know how um, you have to get a new shell for your hermit crab? Like, especially if you get it from like a little baby. 
they have to grow. You literally got to go shop for shells for them to find a new home or they die. Um, maybe that's what this feels like. If I don't find a new shell, I'm going to die. That's weird. Hold on, because now that could be a little dark. But we won't feed into that. A new home. Stranded. Someone either feels stranded, vulnerable, too vulnerable. Oh, okay. Sixth house. There you are. Eighth house with Virgo. So, yeah. And the third house, Gemini. Yeah. Oh, wow. So third house and then Gemini being in alignment with opposition in between. Detaching from some sort of emotional energy here is also very significant or the emotional attachment to a nest that was built. But yet having to move on and move forward for the sake of nurture, for the sake of comfort, for the sake of satisfying your needs here virgo libra integrity reverence and service sixth house is also establishing a foundation health daily life practical details with the eighth house comes transformation karma facing fears and legacies third house early childhood learning basically childhood relations the rational mind and communication so i feel like i picked up on a lot here yeah and here's libra consideration fairness and harmony so for some of you there could be some sort of justice that needs to occur or you feel like justice has been served in some sort of way or you need to do right by your inner child with the fifth house here oh that's a big message somebody got to do right by their inner child or needs to spend some intimate time with their inner child to rekindle that bravery or that pioneering spirit so like i just heard i once was a this and now i'm a that so like i used to be very fiery and very like bold and brave and now i feel more docile more subdued like what happened to me somebody could be going through that what have i transformed into who have I become? Oh, wow, we're getting there. So there could be some sort of similarity that you might be reconciling within yourself to someone that you maybe have tried to detach from, tried to disconnect with, don't see yourself in, right? This doesn't feel like home. This doesn't feel like family, like da 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 blah, 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 that type of thing. Hmm. Bottom of the deck, Libra. Okay. And then look, Pisces and Virgo are seventh house partners. Hmm. There's something there in partnership, especially with Libra being at the bottom. Let's see where you're at in all of this, Virgo Libra. Thank you so much. awkward Angela okay <laughs> there you go yeah okay that's exactly the energy I'm talking about you're like this used to be come naturally to me what's changed spot on Angela okay let's see thank you so much divine tell me a little bit more Aquarius and earth okay so persistence, patience, and practicality, originality, philanthropy, progressive imaginings back out here. Now, I felt like that was more or less you, Virgo Libra. You could be taking on a very Aquarian quality here, Pluto being an Aquarius. Um, definitely watch the Aquarius Pisces reading if that you feel called to, okay? But Capricorn. All right, you got a four card read. There you go. Capricorn in the 10th house. Yeah, so maybe you have some Capricorn in your chart. Ambition, realism, methodical steps, the 10th house about structure, discipline, life mission, accomplishments, and career. You might feel called to do something very differently than those around you, those from your culture, those from your hometown have done. So maybe it is giving kind of like small hometown feel and then I'm breaking out into the big city 
bright eyed and bushy tails. You know what I mean? Like Mercury, there you go. Think, learn, network and communicate. So someone is maybe starting to understand the differences between them and their environment. That could be due to Mercury's retrograde here. Or realizing that a new way of thinking, a new way of communicating, learning or networking is more or less going to bring them closer to their life mission, accomplishment goals or desired accomplishments and career goals. Wanting to be original, wanting to stand out. Right. Wanting to help. Seeing things differently. The seer for my YouTube members, that type of vibe. Maybe there's something that needs to be done practically or is typically done practically or should be like clockwork with the hourglass here. But it's different. You're learning how to deal with some differences, maybe in the workplace as well. This also tells me that someone could be struggling with change in a way or like is typically okay with change, but now realizing like, oof, this is a little tougher than I thought. That's what I mean. It's like someone has created a shell. Maybe you're coming out of a shell or a hermit energy. Oh, I'm picking up my personal deck here. Hold on. Oof. Make sure it's not upside down. Tell me about this earth energy. Thank you. Yeah, there we go. Seven of cups with the hangman. Mm. I just heard needing to connect in new ways. Needing to see something from a different point of view. The seer. Because the hangman is Pisces, Aries energy for me. It's a rebirth energy for me as a reader. But it's also getting a new perspective. Turning something on its head, seeing it from another way round. You got the hermit, yeah. So you've been hermit here, Virgo Libra. Trying to sort through some feelings and emotions, trying to see something. Yeah, trying to find the love in something, trying to find the level of unconditional love, maybe for someone or a situation. Okay, and the star, look, Aquarius. <laughs> clarifying Aquarius. Your fourth house could be in Aquarius. Knight of Cups or Pisces. Or on the cusp of Aquarius, Pisces. Here comes that energy again. A lot of you, maybe if you haven't already, tuning in, um, will, wa blah, 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 will want to watch the Aquarius Pisces reading titled Saturn Brings Harsh Truths and Radical Change. Because you might be watching this a little later after we've done a few more rounds of reads, okay? Mercury retrograde is getting you to look at how to make methodical steps. Be mindful that your words and thoughts don't get in the way. Learn from your mistakes here, Virgo Libra. Yeah, Seven of Swords. Don't let your mind get carried away with something. Or don't deceive yourself into thinking that there's only one way to accomplish something. Yeah, the tower. So there could be a shake up here when it comes to your life mission, um, your sense of structure around your finances or the world structure. This could be a more broad sense here. Take it how it resonates. Or your relationship to, thank you, spirit. Your relationship to the world is going through a tower moment. This would be like the energy of I have a corporate nine to five and then all of a sudden I feel inspired to go buy land and homestead and just be a farmer. Take a whole 180. I no longer identify with that. I want to go do something off the beaten path. Aquarius energy, the fool. People might be saying, oh, Virgo Libra, you're insane. Why would you do that? Why would you risk your stability? Oh, my God, you work so hard for this. And it's just like everything in my soul is calling me to the mountains or to the ocean or to the forest or you know what I mean like to go live in a certain way so this could be a whole lifestyle change happening for someone because Capricorn 10th house it's a 3d world a 3d structure someone is no longer attached to the 3d reality maybe you're entering 4d here yeah six of swords 
higher realms of consciousness or moving into an I almost want to say an emotional state of mind. So maybe you've been very your thoughts have triggered a lot of emotions for you right now, Virgo Libra, but it is clearing it out. Some of you are not a part of this tower, but you got away in time or you left just before something crumbled. Interesting story there. Okay, somebody here, like, let's say like the Jenga game. Hopefully everybody here tuning in has played Jenga. And if you don't know what Jenga is, it's like um, a game where you build a tower stacked with little wooden blocks. Three one way, three the other way, three one way, three the other way. And then the game is to pull out a block without making the tower collapse. Six of swords. Somebody was a block. Somebody pulled out a block and the whole thing crumbled down. So whether that was you leaving something, leaving leaving a job, leaving a person, leaving a relationship, a family, a home, a state. It's almost as if someone or those around you, Virgo Libra, didn't think you mattered in some way or didn't think you were a pillar or a crucial part of the foundation of something. So you might have packed your bags and left and was just like, all right, I'm out. And then Jenga, yeah, <laughs> like... Good luck having stability and not good luck having stability or just people realized because the crown chakra is connected here to the tower. It's a crown chakra awakening. People realize now here, Virgo Libra, how foundational you were to whatever structure they were living in or whatever paradigm or perspective they were seeing through whatever colored glasses they had on. You were a big part of that. And I feel with the detachment and the Aquarius and the star and it's like, okay, I'm done or I'm over it or I took a step back. That step back, even if it was a small one, caused a big tower. That's interesting. Yeah, Page of Swords. Because in this particular tarot deck, the Tazama tarot, the woman is looking back. I almost want to say, if this is about to happen, Virgo Libra, and you do get that nudge of go here, do this, move, get out the way type of thing, end this now, detach now, I wouldn't look, I, I wouldn't look back. Something about that. Maybe this is what Mercury Retrograde is bringing up for you, a past tower moment that you learned a lot from. It's like you almost entered something that was bound. Ooh, I don't want to well, bound to fail or like um, this would give me that energy of like, let's say you get a new job, you move to go for this new job and then you get laid off. I feel like I said that before, but like you get laid off like within three months, six months. And it's like, dang, I just uprooted my whole life. And now I don't have a job like that. You know what I mean? Like something like that. Heartbreak. Yeah. Three of swords. The Emperor. Oh. And the Page of Pentacles. Capricorn in the 10th house. What's the energy connection? The Wheel of Fortune. Beauty for your ashes. Is it too late to offer? Maybe you have an offer coming from an Emperor. Or they offered you something really small. Oh, well, tell me more. Because hold on. Three of Pentacles. Yeah. Or there's an offer coming in. That's going to take you off the beaten path. The road less traveled here, Virgo Libra. Why am I talking in parable? Or like quote type E energy. Maybe someone has like a lot of quotes in their home or something. Or maybe that's how someone speaks. Six of Cups. Oh, Queen of Swords. Partially your energy here. It's Libra Scorpio for me as a reader. Empress, there you are. Virgo Libra, yeah.
Now, to have an emperor and an empress here, with the wheel of fortune and the nine of cups in between, and the three of pentacles and the page of pentacles, it's like... This emperor could be an employer. It doesn't necessarily have to be a person. It can be an entity, an industry, an employment, where someone feels like you're a wish fulfillment or feels like working with you would be a dream or you feel like working with someone would be a dream. And I, I kind of get sometimes with the Wheel of Fortune, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time before the wheel turns. Like it's only a matter of time before you're at the top of that wheel. Your time is coming. Someone's time is coming. Yeah, time, the hourglass. Now, this Three of Swords, I almost don't even want to tap into because I feel like you've moved on from it. But it could be Mercury Retrograde resurfacing it. If you've had a lot of betrayal in the workplace or like feel as if everything you attempted to accomplish got destroyed or like you've always had to rebuild. I've been getting that a lot. I always got to start from scratch. I always got to rebuild because people want to get in the way or lie or deceive or got a lot of sevens here too. Either someone might be getting finally comfortable in their new shell, like their new skin, a new home, a new environment, and that's allowing their natural energy to thrive. That could be it. Someone could also just be very reflective right now on all that was maybe invested between the emperor and the empress. Waiting on, so, oh, ooh, waiting on someone to be wish fulfillment. So this was maybe falling in love. If this is relationships for you guys, falling in love with potential. But now understanding the practical matters. That persistence, practicality has to be like it has to actually like something has to make sense. That, that's an interesting thing. Even with the pentacles I'm looking at, something has to make sense. Or maybe you're looking back and you're like, what was I thinking? That didn't even make sense for me and this emperor to be together. Because just because it's an emperor and an emperor doesn't mean that they're each other's emperor and empress. You know what I mean? An emperor and an emperor. Maybe this is same sex for some of you guys. Or maybe this is dealing with a very masculine dominant industry or environment. Someone's also getting what they wanted in a way like, I don't know if it was like this emperor tried to drive out this empress or deceives, something like that. Because I, I, I just heard my plan worked like, ha ha ha. So there was definitely maybe some sort of scheme here that the empress energy or the feminine energy caught on to regardless of gender. And maybe gotten that boat before. Mm. Whatever attempt at deception was at play here did not work. Because someone's too intuitive. The hermit. Yeah, someone's too intuitive here. I just heard I know something you don't know. So it's almost like if there was like a game trying to be played towards this Empress energy, the Empress caught on, but not maybe played the game back, but played it better. This would be that adage of this ain't checkers, it's chess. You know what I mean? Emperor might have been playing checkers. The Empress was playing chess. So you sound like that. Very interesting energy. We're going to dig a little deeper into the tarot and a little deeper behind this Empress energy and how it's connected to this Mercury retrograde with, again, it being at the bottom of the deck here. We're also going to look into the archetypes that might be beneficial and helpful over in the extended on Patreon. It will be a live reading. Helpful for you here, Virgo Libra, to navigate this energy, especially if you identify as the Empress. Because I do get like struggling to see the beauty. It's like 
this situation maybe took a knock at your confidence a little bit or maybe kind of blurred your vision on yourself. Or you maybe feel like there are lost parts of you now that you need to go and reclaim. So we're going to see what archetypes kind of align with that energy or will support you in that energy, Virgo Libra. And then we'll get some affirmations, some power statements to activate those archetypes for you to use throughout the next few weeks or whenever and however long this is relevant energy for you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I thank you guys so much for being here and allowing me to read for you in this moment. If you enjoyed this reading, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you also subscribe because we have what one more read to do and then we're done with this astrology series. And make sure you also check out the community tab. I put a short little poll to see or a small poll to see if you guys want to get into another round of tarot shorts mini reads or just move right into the love series and love series schedule for the month so go cast your vote if you haven't already i appreciate you guys for your feedback it really does help me grow and cater this content to you guys so thank you thank you thank you for being here i appreciate you thank you queen thank you solar moon thank you angela thank you cc as well for being here in the live chat am i missing anybody anybody else here tuning in live i appreciate you love all right don't be shy say hi either in the live chat or again down below in the comments i love to talk to you guys there and i'll see you all in our next one namaste